This video covers notes 1, 6 about solving literal equations. So in order to solve a literal equation, we need to know what a literal equation is. A literal equation is an equation with most or all variables, so letters. Examples of literal equations can be seen right here to the right. Volume equals length, width, and height. Area equals base times height. If you deal with perimeter, perimeter is two lengths plus two w's. That would be another literal equation. So literal equations can be anything that you've seen. They happen a lot in science. So when we are asked to solve a literal equation, we're still going to follow our don't call me after midnight um, setup. But most of the time, literal equations look a little bit nicer. The answers look ugly, but if you notice off to the left side here, don't, call, me, and after have all been marked out because they're not needed. So usually there's less steps, but the answers look ugly. So in problem one, we have the formula for potential energy here, P equals mgh, where P is potential energy, m is mass, g is gravity, and h is height. They asked me to write an equation to represent g, meaning they want me to solve for g. <coughs> so in my work, I take my, this comes straight from my uh, wordy problem, it comes straight from there. So I write it down. They asked me to solve for g, so we boxed g, just like in the past we've been solving for x, so we've boxed x. Now when I look at g, there's nothing I need to distribute because there's no parentheses. There's nothing to combine because there's only one g, only one m, only one h, and only one p. There's nothing I need to move because I only have one box on one side. There's nothing to add or subtract because there's no addition or subtraction already listed. So the only step we need to complete is multiplying or dividing. So for this problem, I need to get rid of the m and I need to get rid of the h. m and g are being multiplied, so I divide by m. And g and h are being multiplied, so I divide by h. So on the right side, I've divided by m and by h. Well, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. On the left side, I started with P, and I'm dividing by M and H. On the left side, dividing canceled, and I'm left with just G. Now, remember, like we talked about when we talked about combining like terms, you can only combine terms that match, letters that match. So P, M, and H are all separate. There's nothing else I can do here. So this is my final answer. Now, most students really like literal equations because they're easy but also they hate them because they are kind of confusing. Because here we only did one step and our answer looks really ugly, so most people think, no, I'm not done, that was too easy. But with literal equations, if you have what you need, then you're done. Don't make it more complicated. So problem two, um, we are an oil employee's an oil company's employee was asked to find the height of a cylindrical tank, rewrite the formula to find the height. So they want me to find H. So when I look at this problem, H has already been boxed for me. I don't need to distribute because there are no parentheses. I don't need to combine like terms because there are no numbers repeated or letters repeated. I don't need to move my variable to the same side because I only have one box. I don't need to add or subtract because there's no addition or subtraction listed, which means my only step is multiplying or dividing. When I look at H, there's no operations listed here on this right side, which means multiplication. Remember that when we get rid of multiplication, and we divide. So pi divided by pi and r squared divided by r squared. So on the right side, I will have h all by itself if I divide by both of those things. Now, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So pi and r squared need to be divided on the left side as well. On the left side, v is not repeated, pi is not repeated, and r squared is not repeated. So I can't do anything to make that look more simple because nothing is repeated. On the right side, I'm left with h. H is by itself, so I have completed that problem. Okay. 
Problem three has been done for us. So notice they knocked out the first three, don't call me, because there's no distributing, there's no repeated letters or numbers, and there's nothing we need to move because there's only one box. This one they did have to add or subtract because there was an addition or subtraction. So my addition and subtraction I'm showing you in green. They move 6x to the other side by making it a negative. Um, so on the left side it canceled and I just brought down the 2 thirds y. On the right side we just rewrite because x and numbers are not the same. From here we then have to multiply or divide. That 2 thirds needs to be divided and whatever we do to one piece we have to do to all pieces. So on the left side my y is the only piece that's left. In the calculator you can do 6 divided by 2 thirds and get negative 9 and 10 divided by 2 thirds and get 15. In your calculator, we'll see if it'll show up really quickly. Remember that you can click alpha y equals in order to see um, or to put in a fraction. So if I was doing this problem, I would say negative 6 divided by alpha y equals enter 2 over 3 and that's where the negative 9 comes from and you would follow the same steps for 10 divided by 2 thirds. Um, now, depending on how you write it, this is just showing you, you can put the um, 6x in front or the 6x in the back and both of these mean the same thing. So the order on the right side does not matter as long as you keep the sign with the number that it goes with. Problem four, we're asked to solve for y again. So we still use, don't call me, I forgot call. Don't call me after midnight. There are no parentheses, so nothing to distribute. No x's, y's, or numbers repeated, so nothing to combine. Only one box of y's, so nothing to move. We do need to add or subtract because there's something outside of the box. So 7x becomes a negative 7x to move to the other side. On the left side, I'm left with my box, negative y. On the right side, I have 14 minus 7x. You could also write negative 7x plus 14. Uh-oh, I need this to catch up. There we go. While you're writing this, I want to point out that some people prefer to write their terms like so, where you have your number and then the x, and when you bring it down, you bring it all down. It helps them remember that those are not the same. So you don't have to rewrite that. I'm just showing you some people prefer to write it like that so they don't accidentally put the 14 and the 7x together. From here, I do need to multiply or divide because I don't have y by itself. I have negative y. So in order to get rid of that negative, I divide every piece on every side by negative 1. So y equals... 14 divided by negative 1 is negative 14. Negative 7x divided by negative 1 is a positive 7x. And remember, order doesn't matter, so you could also write it as 7x minus 14. The preference is up to you. Problem 5 was done as a partner, so I will remind you, or this would actually be a good time for you to pause the video to work out the problem and explain the process to your, to your partner or just write it here and then press play and listen to the explanation to make sure you got it right. So this problem has been asked you to solve for y. So when you solve for y, we're going to still use don't call me after midnight. Don't need to distribute because there are no parentheses. I don't need to combine any like terms because there's no x's, y's, or numbers repeated. I don't need to move to one side because my y's are only on one side. I do need to add or subtract because there's an ax on the same side as that by. I move ax to the other side through subtraction. So on the left side, I'm left with by. On the right side, I have c minus ax. You could also put negative ax plus c. I am then going to multiply or divide. With y, there is a b, and I need to divide it out. So I will take every piece and divide it. So c divided by b, negative a over x divided by b. 
Um, depending on your teacher, you could also write it like this. You could see both ways on a state test. So make sure you know that you can take the top and divide it by the bottom or take all of the pieces of the top and divide it by the bottom.